going on then with Operation Security? Well, I suppose still starting out with Operation Security, what are we talking about with regard to Operation Security? What is our objective in this domain? And no, it's not just a, a catch-all of everything we didn't talk about in the other domains, more specific domains. We, we have requirements for operation security and it's our requirements for operating the business in general. And going back to SPAF's dictum, uh, that a secure system is one that does what it's supposed to do. A secure business is one that does what it's supposed to do. So, what uh, is our business supposed to do and let's let's do that so we want to reduce the vulnerabilities and threats to availability integrity and confidentiality going right back to the beginning what you know what is it that our intention in security is and and this throughout our operations and and therefore in a very real sense uh, throughout our enterprise um, we want to balance the ease of use and adequate system controls with uh, you know needs to to actually get the job done um, we want to uh, do this bearing in mind the value of the data um, the value of the systems and and the business in in general um, so again that that balance uh, between costs of controls uh, and security requirements that we put in place, the safeguards, and um, both the, the data and the business. Um, uh, just in terms of the uh, local news, as, as I'm recording this, um, London Drugs here in Western Canada has had a ransomware attack um, and breach extortion um, that uh, obviously uh, it, it was a combination of the two because initially um, the company had to shut down operations um, and uh, uh, they were obviously concerned about um, a, uh, a breach of customer confidentiality in terms of medical records, at least in terms of uh, what um, prescriptions uh, people had, um, and they were, uh, they seem to have made sure that that is in fact protected, and and that the breach extortion that is, uh, and, and some information is being released, but that is, while embarrassing to the company and and possibly um, difficult for some of their employees, at least it seems to be limited to that. Um, so, you know, uh, reputational damage is, is something that we have to pay attention to. Um, uh, and, and, you know, all the things that go along with protecting our operations, what it is that we, we do in this business uh, in comparison with the, the business itself and, and what um, is... Uh, you know the the value of the business and and the value of the data that we hold and and there are you know situations there obviously where um, different values are involved with different uh, types of data uh, that uh, these attackers were able to get access to. Um, so the value of the data is always something that we have to. Uh, pay attention to, particularly in regard to operations. Um, the intrinsic value of the data, 
um, and the uh, financial and monetary value of the data. Uh, and again, this is something to bear in mind in, in terms of the cost-benefit uh, balance in, in terms of uh, our systems, our protections, uh, our operations. Uh, the ongoing business need for the data, and, and eventually we'll get into um, issues of uh, destruction of data, because as I believe I have mentioned, um, for all that um, in terms of integrity and availability, we have to take measures to protect this data. Once we get to the point of uh, thinking, okay, we need to destroy this data, um, it can sometimes be remarkably hard to actually ensure that it is destroyed effectively and cannot be recovered if that is an issue. So, uh, some of the other requirements, um, our regulatory requirements uh, for legislation or in uh, industry, and again, we'll get into regulatory law um, when we go into law and investigation in the next domain, um, but it is, uh, well, it, it's interesting. Um, uh, some of the stuff I've been working with uh, community policing on, we're, we're dealing a lot with um, uh, traffic situations, speed, uh, people's licensing, whether or not their vehicle is licensed, and all of that, of course, comes under regulatory law. Uh, but in certain situations, like I clocked somebody at 94 in a 50 zone the other day, and once, um, in, in Canada at least, uh, you go over 80 kilometers an hour, particularly in a city, uh, that becomes, uh, even though it is uh, regulatory law, but that becomes dangerous driving and that is a criminal offense. And so that person, uh, if uh, they wanted to pursue it, uh, could be uh, criminally prosecuted, even though I was only doing this as a community policing volunteer, if they wanted to um, uh, pursue that, that could be a criminal charge. I could be called into court to testify in that situation. So once again, um, you know, we've, we've got situations, and, and we'll talk about this more in, in law, um, where something that looks like just a, a regulatory offense um, can become a criminal offense. Uh, so uh, that becomes possibly an important requirement in terms of operation security um, that we have to deal with compliance with regulation. Um, we want to protect the resources and the assets of the organization and the enterprise. Um, so all of that uh, is very much part of our operation security and directs our operation security and our considerations in operation security.